Hiya. Yeah. How you doing? You all right? Good. Good. Very good. Right, today we're going to be learning about seventh chords. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> remember a few weeks ago I put out a video on harmonizing the major scale, specifically the C major scale, and we built our diatonic chords in the key of C major, today we're going to further extend that harmony to figure out our seventh chords. If we rewind back to our C major triad, that was root, third, and fifth, C, E, G. So all I'm doing here is counting up the scale to one, three, five from my root note, C. You can also view that as playing a note and skipping one, leapfrogging, as we talked about in that other lesson. Now, in order to get the first seventh chord, in the key of C, we're going to need to play the seventh note. That's the note B. Now, let's look at B in relation to C, okay? That interval, if you remember, is a major seven. It's not the nicest thing to the ear. So let's come down here to our C chord that we built. It's got a root note, major third, perfect fifth, a root note, and a major third. We can substitute one of those duplicated notes for our new major seventh. And the smartest place would be to take out this octave here of C and replace it with an open B. Adding in that major seven interval has now made that a C major seventh. So let's take a look at our second chord, D minor. From the D, to find our new interval, we're going to walk up the C major scale. Seven notes. Okay, that's a C. Now, if you're new to intervals, you might be confused by that because we won't have done that in the major scale. So if we use our previous major seventh interval shape here, the C to the B. If we slide that up two frets to the D, that would be a D major seven, D to C sharp. But that's not what we wanted. We wanted D to C. But hopefully, kind of putting this puzzle together, you can realize we've just brought that C sharp back a semitone. So it's a flat seven, a minor seven. Remember, if you're playing something new, don't just look at it and think, eh, I don't know what that is. Try and use other things that you know, other theory or other reference points to kind of figure it out. And then if not, ask for help. But there what I did was use something familiar, the major seventh interval, to figure out it was a semitone different. It's come back, it's a minor seven interval. Let's come down here to our D minor chord. We know D minor is three notes, but we're playing four strings here. That's because the B string, third fret, is also a D, the same as the open root. Okay, I know that first fret of the B string is the note C. So I can bar here, take this third finger off, and that would give me D minor seven. Moving on to the third chord in the key of C, that would be E minor. I'll count up seven notes. It's that minor seven interval again, okay? It's the note D. So I know that if I put an E minor on and I take this finger off, add in the open D, that's E minor seven. I could also leave those fingers on and I could add the pinky to the note D, which we just talked about from the previous chord on the third fret of the B string, and give me a kind of more oasis, E minor seven. 
Oasis, the band, not the drink. Okay, moving on quickly to the next chord. Why are you moving on quickly? I can hear you ask. Well, I'm trying to hustle you to get over to my Patreon because I get a fiver out of it, but you also get the PDF and you get to ask me questions, which I always answer. Come on, don't be tight. So fourth chord would have been an F major. Counting up from F within the C major scale, seven notes. We've got an E. F to E. Hopefully you recognize that by ear after my other lesson. It's a major seventh. So if I play my F major down here, three note chord over four strings again, it's because the lowest note and the highest note are both F, both root notes. If I lift up that index finger, that makes that high F an E, which was the major seventh we wanted to put in. F major seven. At this point, you might be thinking, well, it was C major, it's gonna be C major seven. If it was D minor, it's gonna be D minor seven, etc. I don't need the rest of the lesson. You do, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you do, because now we're at G and it gets a little bit different. A G major has a root major third and a perfect fifth in it. G, B, D. Let's count up seven notes from the G. That's a minor seventh interval. So we had a G major initially, root major third, perfect fifth. And now we've got to add a minor seventh in. When that happens, you get what's called a dominant seventh chord or a G seven for short. That note that we added in was an F, okay? I'm gonna play a three finger version of G major, open position. Okay, we've got our root note here. We have a root note in the middle, open G, and we also have a root note right at the top. We know that the first fret of the E string is an F. That's the minor seven we need to add in. So I'm gonna swap this chord around, kind of like a huge C chord, okay? Except these two fingers have been brought down a string and the index has been pushed up. That now gives us G7, G dominant seven. Moving on to the next chord, A minor. Root minor third, perfect fifth. Counting up seven notes. Okay, it's so the note G. Hopefully you can recognize by ear, it is a minor seven again, but the shape doesn't look like the other minor sevens from before that lined up. Okay, you're right. That's because the G to the B string is tuned to a major third. I did talk about that in some of my other lessons. Um, if you've missed them, check out the music theory playlist, make your way through back to this lesson and then go, huh, all right. All right, all right. right, so that must mean we need to add a G into our A minor chord. Here's an A minor, open A. Second fret of the G string, Hint, hint, is also an A. So we can take that off, duplicate root note. Add in the G and we've created an A minor seven. So onto the seventh chord, which was B diminished. Had a root note, minor third, and a diminished fifth or a flat five. Now, when we count up seven notes from the B, we get an A. It's also a minor seventh interval, the same as the previous one. Now, that must mean that we've got a minor seven chord with a flat five. So let's come down here to the B diminished. Root note, which is the B. Pinky is playing a duplicate of that, another octave. When we take that off, if our index finger is barring across, the second fret of the G is the extra A note that we now need to add in. And that's given us B minor seven flat five. I really love the sound of the minor seven flat five. I feel like the diminished chord just sounds kind of like a bland game over chord. And it's quite angry, but the minor seven flat five, I don't know, it sounds like a smoky jazz club or something. 
It's got more about it, obviously, because it's got an extra note. You might be thinking, great, I've just learned a load of seventh chords. What do we do with them? It's a good question. If you are messing around in the key of C and you're writing a song, why don't you try swapping one of those chords out for one of your new seventh chords? This isn't just unique to the key of C. If you move to the key of G and wanted to figure out all your seven chords, then the first one would be, again, major seven, G major seven. Second chord, A minor seven. Third chord, B minor seven. Fourth chord, C major seven. Fifth chord, D dominant seven. Just checking that you remembered that the fifth had the major third and the minor seven, so we get that dominant seven chord. Sixth chord, relative minor. E minor seven. And then that would leave us with the seventh being F sharp, because G has got one sharp in it. F sharp minor seven flat five. So we could play a minor seven chord here and we could flatten the five. Or we could play it like this. Root note, minor seventh, minor third, index finger grabbing the C, fret one of the B string. It's a flat five. Putting the flat five at the top kind of um, makes the uh, the bottom end of the chord less muddy. Although I'd say they both have their purposes. That's probably more common though. Sounds like um, 90s hip hop, minus seven flat five. What's that? Put that in the comments. Oh, right, my ass has gone numb. Me ass! Me ass has gone numb. I haven't got anything else to say because my ass has gone completely numb. Um, but it's been on my mind to do the seventh chords because a lot of people asked me about them following on from doing the initial harmonizing the major scale lesson. That was a long sentence. Now, I hope it all made sense. I wanna make sure that these lessons are concise so that people aren't put off by thinking, that's a huge video, I'm not gonna get that. It can be a difficult concept to understand at first, but once you get it, once you understand what's going on, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and if you do need the extra help and the supplementary materials, do consider checking out my Patreon. And also from there, you might wind up on my Discord server, looking at pictures of everybody's dogs, which is going down at the moment. Isn't it, Mike? I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of midweek music theory for you. If you didn't enjoy it, get lost. Don't care. Right, got a present for you.